Hey guys, in this video, we'll be quickly talking about prototyping in Figma. What is prototyping to begin with? Well, prototyping in short just allows you to make your designs much more interactive. So similar to let's say if you had a design or you had a website design and you needed to show some interactions, you needed to take users from one page to the next, you needed to showcase button transitions, button animations, some other animations in terms of let's say slideshows moving on, so on and so forth, like all of that can be done with prototyping. So let's just get started and see how that works. So you can actually access the prototyping uh, feature by going to the prototyping thing here, but let's just first go ahead and create a desktop frame. So I'm just gonna call this frame one. I'm gonna create a circle here and let's just go ahead and do that. I'm gonna color it by just gonna give this particular color. I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm just gonna move the circle here. So basically what I wanna do is whenever a person clicks this circle, I actually want it to go over here. So how do you actually achieve that in Figma? Well, you achieve that by just selecting the thing that you actually want that interaction on. You click on the prototyping, You there's a plus button here. You can obviously click the plus button here as well, but I'm just basically gonna select this and I'm gonna select um, the frame two. Automatically, it's gonna snap to frame two. You can only snap to frames if you're uh, not working with components. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely talk about that sh uh, shortly. But now if I actually click here, um, or release my uh, mouse click, it says after a per after I click on it, go to frame two and the transition and the animation should be dissolved and it's gonna take some time. So now if I actually open the prototyping view, which is which you can do by pressing the pointer here and it's gonna take some time and now it's here. Now if I click on it, as you can see, it automatically transition and positions itself here. Now let's say I can also do it instantly. Obviously I can click on it and it instantly changes uh, to that position. I can also do smart animate, which is extremely powerful in Figma and we'll definitely be exploring the powerful effects of smart animate later on in perhaps a parallax video or something else. But now let's say if I click on it, as you can see it actually animates um, linearly or at least like with an ease in effect uh, to the bottom right. I can also have it move in. So for example, I can just click it and now it's gonna move in after 2000 milliseconds, which is basically two seconds. And then you have some other effects as well here, slide in, push, so on and so forth. So if I do slide in, it's gonna go completely uh, out of the screen on the left and then come from the uh, right. And as you can see, I can also tweak like where exactly it, it should come from and you can do that as well. But perhaps the one of the most important things here and one of the most used ones is smart animate and dissolve. I think like that's mostly the ones that people are going to be working with, but obviously some of the other ones are also very useful. Especially for example, in mobile screens, when you have, when you wanna have, let's say, transitions where your menu actually pushes the content or slides in or anything. So you would obviously then use push, slide in, slide out, so on and so forth. So now uh, I can also change some of the effects here. I can, I can tweak the animation or the curves of the animation. I can say it goes linearly by linear. It means it's not gonna start uh, slow or fast or anything along those lines. It's just gonna go in the same speed. So now let's say if I click on it, it's going in the same speed and it's gonna stop at the bottom with ease in. It's actually going to start um, really fast at the top and uh, really slow at the top and then it's gonna move faster with ease out obviously it's gonna uh, uh, slow down at the end with ease and ease out. It's gonna be faster in the middle, but slow at the edges. So that ease in and ease out effect is also something that's really used. Ease in and ease out back is actually gonna, once I click on it, it's gonna go back first and then it's gonna go uh, a bit forward and then gonna come back. And then you also have a great option, which is custom, and you can actually tweak uh, the the graph for the animation. So you don't have to worry about this, really people actually, I don't think like you would actually use this, but let's say if you do wanna use it, if you wanna say like, hey, in this particular animation, I want it to start slow, but then I actually want it to be extremely fast and then even perhaps exceed the position and then come back. So I can say it should be really slow uh, at the start and then at the end, it should be really uh, fast. So now if I click on it, as you can see, it's really fast. It even goes off the screen and then comes back. So those are just basically simple things that you can do and really powerful things to begin with. So yeah, that's uh, that's how, that. those are some of the basic options for interact 
uh, for, in the, for some of the interaction details. Obviously, I can also choose to drag it. I can also choose to um, start this animation once a person is hovering over it. I can do it while pressing. I can do it, let's say, if a person actually presses a key. So I, I can say uh, once a person presses the S key, it's going to start. So now if I actually go here and press the S key, as you can see, it's starting. And I can do all of that uh, fun stuff. Uh, one thing that's really important is the on drag thing. So now if I actually drag this particular thing, as you can see, it's moving uh, with my drag. And if I actually end it at the top, it's not going to work. But if I actually end it closer to the end point, it's actually going to uh, transition to the next screen. So that's really important as well. It's really powerful. Um, and yeah, those are a few things that you need to know about the prototype view. Again, we're going to get into more detail about the prototype view once we're actually working on actual designs and just show you how that works. But if I actually had to point out one more example that's really important here, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a component. So we can go ahead and we can create a, I don't know, uh, a checkbox perhaps. So let's just go ahead and create a checkbox. I'm just gonna create a really large checkbox here just to show you guys. I'm gonna give it a border radius. I'm gonna make it a checkbox slash default. I'm going to make it a component here. I'm going to create a, um, I'm going to bring up an icon here. I'm going to say it's going to be the check icon. I'm going to center it, but perhaps increase the font size as well. And so this is basically the checked icon um, or the checked button. I'm, I can also obviously give it a background if I want to, but I don't want to give it because obviously this is the default state. I want to create a checked state as well. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna give it a border. So let's just give it a border like that. Just, let's just give it a three pixel border, probably even a lighter one, something like this. I'm gonna hide the check mark here and I'm gonna duplicate this particular thing. I'm gonna detach it and I'm gonna create a component again and I'm gonna say checked. So now we have these two uh, particular variants and I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna go ahead and enable the check here. I'm gonna remove the, the border. I'm, I'm just gonna make this particular thing blue. I'm gonna make the icon white. So here's the active state for the checkbox. Let's just make it darker. And now let's say, I can actually say that anytime this particular component is included in the project, considering that actually we're using interactive prototypes, I can actually, with interactive prototypes, I can make my variants interact with one another. I can say if a person by uh, go to going to the prototype view, selecting this particular variant, I can go ahead and I can actually drag this to the other variant state. And I can say after a person clicks on it, change this particular variant to the checked state. And I can do the same thing here. I can say if the checked state is clicked, I want you to go back to the default state. And now I also want to do a smart animate of, let's say, I, I just want to do it quickly. I'm going to say 300, just really quickly. And let's just go ahead and include this checkbox on this particular page. I can also write checkbox. Obviously the font is different. So let's just go ahead and use a different font, 24. So this is our checkbox and just center it. Let's just go ahead and center it and yeah. So now let's just open this particular thing. And now let's say if I click on it, as you can see, the, the prototype is working. Obviously it's really slow, so I, I don't really want it that much that slow. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna select this thing. I'm gonna say it's just gonna be instant. Similarly here, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's instant. Now, if I go back, I can check it, uncheck it, check it, uncheck it. And the powerful thing about this particular thing or working with, uh, <clears throat> the prototyping view or interactive components is, you can actually have this component duplicated in multiple files. So I can have it here, I can have it here, 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 here. And now that you actually have all of that particular component connected, I can actually mark this as check, check, check. So all of these are separate instances and they're gonna work uh, irrespective of their other instances that are placed beside them. And these can be laid out on separate pages, even in separate files if you're working with team libraries. So again, this actually makes uh, your pages even more powerful and even more interactive and perhaps come alive. So those are the things that you probably should know about the prototyping view. Obviously, some other minor things that you actually wanna know is that you have multiple flows as well. So for example, if I wanna go ahead and I can say, I want this particular flow to be, so let's just go ahead and say flow two, and then let's say flow one, 
And now if I actually go here, I have this sidebar button and I can actually go to separate flows by clicking the flow one and flow two. So that's something that you can do. I'm gonna uh, probably cover the flows in a separate video. I'm not sure if they are really that useful in this particular one, but that's basically what interactive components are about. And some other minor things is that if you wanna change the background, obviously you can go here and you can say, I want the background to be gray. Uh, by going to the prototype view and that's going to change the background of this particular thing. I can obviously make it black or gray. So that's fine as well. I can also change the device that it appears in. I can say I want this to be an iPhone 11. So now as you can see my screen actually appears inside a frame uh, of the iPhone 11 and I can tweak the coloring as well. I can say it needs to be white so on and so forth. So again these are just really cool ways to present your designs to make them much more interactive. And I think this should be pretty beneficial to you, especially if you're working with a lot of designs that require a lot of interaction to actually uh, present themselves. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Do subscribe, do hit the bell icon, do let me know if you like the videos and do comment if there's something specific that you would like to see or if you need any clarification in anything that we've discussed. But that's pretty much it. In the next video, I'm thinking we'll actually cover or we'll actually go ahead and create a design in which we utilize some of the skills that we've been talking about. We'll actually just quickly go ahead and create a desktop design, perhaps just the intro section. We're gonna play around with the components there. We're gonna play around with interactive components. We're gonna play around with prototypes, perhaps even make a small parallax effect there as well. So stay in touch and definitely do let me know if you need anything else. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Take care.